This meeting is being recorded. Mr. Chairman, you may begin. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for attending the Alpha Stand Advisory Committee meeting of March 15th, 2022. As stated, this meeting is being recorded, which is a way big risk to me as it more than so to many of you. <laughs> but so we'll open up the meeting with um, a- uh, You can't hear call. Tim? No, can, can we talk a little louder? I have my sound up to 100 and I still, I can barely hear Tim. Okay, I'll set it up higher. We'll start the meeting with a roll call. Stevie? Good afternoon, all. Nick Bianchi? Lisa Werder Brown? Here. Lloyd Cunningham? Dan DeMarco? Present. Patricia DeMarco? She said yes. Tina Doucet? Here. Ariam Ford Graver. Nick Resock. Here. Mark Heckman. Here. Rebecca Kiernan. Ken Lasada. Here. Ruthie Ann Omer. Happy to be here. Stanley Paps. Will Pickering, Mary Ellen Ramage, here. Tim Rogers, here. Kathy Sapp, Danielle Ventresca, here. I have 11. We have a quorum plus one. Very good. <laughs> Thank you for attending. It was a um... Owing to last month's failure to have a quorum, first item on the agenda is the possible approval of the minutes of the January 22nd meeting. Your pleasure. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of January 2022 for the Alpha San Advisory Committee. Second. Motion and a second. Any question? Clarifications? Hearing none, all in favor, give your consent by saying aye or put your aye. thumb up. Aye. 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 Any opposition? Those minutes are approved. Uh, approved possible approval of the minutes of February 2022. Mr. Chair, oh, hold on. Uh, I sent out a replacement just a few minutes ago. Uh, it inadvertently said that Arletta was present on the list of who attended the last meeting. So that's the only difference. Okay, thank you. Motion to accept minutes of February of 2022. Second. Thank you, Patricia and Nick. Uh, questions or corrections to the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Good. The ayes haven't so ordered. Possible motion to accept, reluctantly, the resignation of Mark Sampogna. I'll make a motion to accept. Motion. Oh, go ahead, Mary Ellen. Oh, I'm sorry. No, Mary Ellen, you go. With regret, we accept. I make a motion to accept it. <clears throat> we'll miss him. Yep, Ruth Ann, uh, you want to second that? I'll, I'll I'll second it with regret. He's out of my basin, so I second it with a lot of regret. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks. Good Thank you. Motion and a second. Question on the motion. I just think we should send a uh, uh, commendation for his years of service and th gratitude to him from all of us for his uh, service expertise and joy in working on this issue with us. Good, good suggestion, thank you. Uh, Jeannie, can you make sure that that gets done? I'm, I'm writing it down. Yeah. Thank you. All in favor, give your consent by saying aye. 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 Close. Ayes have it so ordered. Next item is an update on the communications of the virtual public meetings on Act 537 study set for March 30th, 10 a.m. Joey? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, you're correct. Uh, March 30th, which is a Wednesday, uh, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., um, we will be having our Act 537 plan special study public meeting. That's a mouthful. Um, basically, this is the uh, amended 
uh, Act 537 that many of you are familiar with for the tunnel system. Um, so we will be presenting that publicly twice. It is a virtual meeting uh, via Zoom. Uh, we will have uh, a Q&A at the end, and then there's a, correct me if I'm wrong, Michelle, 30 days comment period for public. 30 day comment period for public. We'll have all of that information up on the website uh, very soon. Um, happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Joe? Um, yes, Joey, will you be sending, you said you put it up on the website. Could you, would you be sending us, us something that we could send out in an email blast or do we need to go to the website to get that information? No, Lisa, I can send you some. I can send you guys something that you're welcome to use for the meet. Absolutely. Right. Thank That'd you. Helpful. That would be very helpful. Any other questions? Hearing none, Joe. Thank you for your input. Clean Water Action Plan progress, Kim. Our award-winning, our award-winning Kim. <laughs> nope, it's March. We're not allowed to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, I just threw a couple slides together. Do uh, there's a lot of construction. I think it's interesting to look at a couple pictures. Um, let me see here. All right. I look all right. Yes. So let's do that. So um, the North End, I showed you a drone footage last month of from November of 2021. So this one was just taken a couple of weeks ago. Um, and, you know, obviously the river wall, is, you know, has been complete since la the end of last year. But you can really see the excavation progressing for the new chlorine contact tank. As a reminder, this chlorine contact tank is going to be our chlorine contact tank for um, our dry weather flows up to 295 million gallons per day. So it's really starting to take shape. And then there's gonna be two new final settling tanks um, and they're sort of starting to take shape as well. So um, looking forward to sharing updates with you as this project continues. This one isn't gonna be done until 2025. It's a slow go, um, but nonetheless, pretty important. Kim, what does a chlorine contact Thank you. So the chlorine contact tank is the last step in our treatment process. Um, it is it so sodium hypochlorite is injected at the beginning of the tank, and in order to meet our effluent permit requirements um, from DEP, we needed a certain amount of contact time for the flow to mix with the chlorine prior to discharge to the river. And this here. Um, will be our new outfall. Right before it hits the, um, right before the water hits the outfall, it'll also be injected with sodium bisulfite to dechlorinate. So the chlorine kills the bacteria and then there's, it's hit with a dechlorination to protect the fish right before it goes out. Um, and then there's also, there'll also be a defoamer that we'll use as needed just to make sure that um, the turbulence doesn't create uh, foaming or anything that um, could create a problem down here. So there will be a building eventually in this flat area that'll have sodium hypochlorite for chlorination, sodium bisulfite for dechlor, and then the defoamer to be used as needed. Thank you. Next picture is from our East Head Works. So this is um, the future site of the screenings and grit facility. Um, so this is basically right here is where the O&M building where we are and then our lead is off to the left. I'm sure you all are familiar with this spot. This is a big location for open house. Um, and it's a very visible area of our plant. Um, and so we're to the point now where we're starting to put the auger cast piles in. And by next month, there will be a tower crane set up uh, here and it'll be there for about a year and a half to, um, as the building, um, as you know, we, we move out of the ground and we start towards the building. So a lot of great progress on the East Headworks 
project as well. And then this is the uh, return activated sludge. I, I had talked about this. These are internal pump stations that sort of recycle the flow. And with the increased flow, we need bigger pump stations. So these, this is the, these are actually just in our um, maintenance tunnels, but the pump stations, the two on the one side have been totally gutted. The pads have been poured for the new um, pumps. They're on site uh, to be installed soon. And then they actually were able to um, also install some section, suction piping. So this half of the plant is completely on bypass pumping. And once those two pump stations are done, then everything will move to the other side and we'll do the other two um, return activated sludge pump stations. And this project is slated to finish in November of this year. So it's moving pretty quickly. And then our parking garage. So last month when I showed you the um, progress on the parking garage, these were this, this deck hadn't been poured yet. Um, and with the break in this weather, this parking garage will be really moving um, at a rapid pace here. This is the elevator shaft, uh, but it's really starting to um, take shape even between last Friday and today, um, more concrete's been poured and we expect this to be completed by the summer. So that I think is everything I had on the plant expansion, just a brief upgrade update on some of our projects here. And then the other thing, you know, associated with the clean water um, plan progress and updates, we put out the request for qualifications for the Ohio River Tunnel CM services. Elkasan likes to get the CM on board right around the 30% design. Um, we feel that there's a tremendous amount of value in having the construction managers input um, with value engineering and constructability and biddability reviews. It, it worked out very well for the plant expansion projects. And I think it's even more important when we do the tunneling and near surface facility projects. So that um, RFQ is out. There is a information meeting next Friday. It'll be held via Teams. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, it's on, it's on March 31st. I'm getting ahead of myself. On March 31st, and then the quals are due on May 6th. So here's a, a link to get more information um, on that project opportunity. And then this is, this is the same um, slide that I showed you last month. And we are moving right along with uh, the ORT final designer, trying to get that, you know, um, all the details um, worked out for a 30% design third quarter of this year. And obviously this is the biggest, the heavy lift right now is the 537 plan. Joey mentioned we have the public meeting scheduled. Um, the importance of the plan, it's, it's, we have to get the plan approved prior to being able to submit and get the permits for the construction of the Ohio River Tunnel. So since last month's update, we've gotten two more resolutions. We had Aetna and O'Hara, and um, most recently we've gotten Millvale and West Homestead. So we're up to four resolutions, which is great. Um, and we continue to answer questions and uh, if there's any hesitation or pause, you know, we're here to explain the work, the consent decree, compliance with the consent decree and what we're planning on doing here. And um, some of our dates have been more finalized. So we are finalizing the, the draft of the plan that will be posted for public comment um, next week. We plan to send it to the agencies for their review that same week. The agencies get 60 days per the guidance and the public gets 30 days. So, I mean, it's only a week ahead of time, but that's just the way it worked out. So we're gonna get it out to the agencies um, next week. We will post it to the Alcasan website 
Then on March 30th, we'll have our public meetings, and then that's the start of the 30-day public comment period. So hopefully you guys can attend one of those two sessions um, and you know we'll dig into the a little bit more detail on the plan and the tunnels and everything associated with the changes um, to the sewage planning incorporated in that study. And that's all I have for an update today, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for um, Kim, this is for Kim, this is Ruth Ann. Um, just compliments again. These are huge projects. The fact that you're moving forward. Have you had any trouble with material delays because of uh, you know problems getting materials and the jobs? Do you see it improving right now? I've heard some difference of opinions on that. Um, is anything affecting uh, the jobs at all like that? Uh, it, I have not seen any improvements yet. We haven't kind of passed over that. So there is um, there are a lot of delays. The good news is, is our projects are really long and we have a lot of um, site civil work to do and the contractors are aware of these delays. So we're trying to get those shop drawings in and approved to get that those orders in as soon as we can. But um, like certain diameters of pipe, the, the geofoam block for the parking garage um, and metals and electrical equipment. Yeah, there, and I have not seen it. I have not observed it getting any better yet. Okay, and then these are great projects. I know Jeannie's talking later about ALOM and what Alpha San is doing up there. I hope there's somewhere that there's pictures or revolving video or something highlighting all these great projects. So people see A1, you know, if they say something about their rates, well, this is where the money's going and it's keeping everybody in line. It's just really great information. So I'm sure there's some big splash or sore talk, as you know how I like them, up at um, ALOM, you know, really touting Alpha San because you've been doing a great job. Thank Thanks. You. Yep. Any other comments? Hi, this is Rebecca from uh, from Pittsburgh. Um, we've, I mean, everybody knows that we've had like an administration change and a lot of staffing changes. I was wondering, you know, would you guys um, like be able to come and maybe explain uh, some of what's in the 537 plan um, and what's needed from the city? Where are the areas that, you know, we're able to weigh in? Um, to some of that new staff. Um, and we had also had a conversation, I think a couple of months ago, um, about potentially like going out to the sites and looking at um, where there's going to be like, like ground, like site disturbance um, mm -hmm. in some of these areas. I was wondering if, you know, we could couple those things or maybe revisit a little bit about like where, where would the drop shafts be and, um, you know, where are the locations that you would need site access um, and then, you know, what's what's in the plan for some of our new staff? Sure, Rebecca. This is Jean. We have been um, doing ongoing uh, education with anybody who would listen to us. Uh, we have met with the council members and there's a resolution set for next week. We have okay. been, been out in uh, the District 8 communities. It's District 8 no, District 7 communities, um, and we've met with the mayor's office. But if you want to send me an email about who you want us to meet with, we'll be happy to do that. Uh, we can, you know, do be out there in the field with folks. Okay. Oh, and we met, with, we met with city planning, too. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we've just, we've had a lot of turnover, and mm -hmm. it'd probably be good to make sure everybody's on the same page. Yes, that would be Thanks. perfect. Would be happy to do that. Okay. Just send me an email. Thank you, Jean. No problem. Thank you, Rebecca. Anybody else? Any, any other comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to an update on regionalization by Mike Lichner. Mike? Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just got a couple slides. Uh, some of these mirror what, what was presented last month, but uh, let's see here. Can you see my screen? Not yet. Let me try this again. You see it now? No. Okay, I'm having problems here. There we go. Can you see it now? Yes. <laughs> I'm technically <you> challenged. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if I can get the thing to move here. There we go. Um, yeah, I think you, some of you saw this last month. Um, 
This is just our basic slide on uh, how many municipal systems meet criteria, uh, eight facilities, um, 265 miles, 6,400 manholes, uh, 77 diversion structures. Um, by the way, Julia Spiker has been doing a great job, fantastic job with outreach, you know, getting status reports, getting status updates from the municipalities, trying to understand where they're at in the process. Can we assist? And, and you know, if, if we can, how can we assist? So uh, my hat's off to her and what she's been doing. Um, yeah, the, the current status, uh, you know, Julius put the slide together, 71 of 80 modified transfer agreements have been distributed. Uh, 19 municipalities have completed their repairs. Uh, 11 councils have approved the agreements. Um, we've completed record searches, permit record searches at DEP for 14 municipalities. Uh, Julia and, and her team continue to meet on, individually on a one to one multi municipal level. We got a couple meetings coming up on the facilities. Um, request municipalities share copies of their signed resolutions and transfer agreements. You know, anything there I missed, Julia? No, oh, Mike. And uh, thanks for the acknowledgement that a lot of credit goes to the municipalities and the team. We've had right. some great support, people that have stuck with us through this and just can't say enough about how much work the municipalities have done mm -hmm. to get us to this point. Do you want to do you want to speak a bit to the transfer process? Sure. So it's We've completed the identification of the defect repairs and we're really moving forward into the actual process of transferring those assets to Alcasan. So everyone has their updated transfer agreement and we are asking that if you've passed the resolution or signed your agreement that you give us a heads up, let us know about that. That documentation is important in how we're prioritizing those DEP record searches. So once we are able to see that you're moving forward, we're completing that record search on your behalf and then working through the process of either applying for a new permit if that's needed or completing the permit transfer application. That's the last big hurdle that we see before we can execute these agreements. And we're happy to say that some of the municipalities are there. So it's, it's beginning to go from making repairs to completing the transfer process. You want to, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the, one of the key things here too is to, to complete all the transfer agreement exhibits. Uh, you know, provide us with copies of your documentation. That's or, you know, just reach out to us and and uh, you know talk to us if you're, you're you're concerned and if if we need to to assist in any manner, we'll do that. Um, we we provided an array of documents to you. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, reach out to us. Um, if you don't have a copy of your permits, we'll, we're working right now with DEP. Uh, we're we're uh, sending folks down by by POC, I believe, or municipality. I, yeah, by municipality. In, in municipality to do record searches, and uh, you know that I think they're they're still on microfilm, I believe, but uh, there's some there's some little bit, bit of work there to 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 uh, corral all these ag agreements or these permits, so. Uh, we're just uh, continuing here to assist. And uh, like I said, we're gonna continue to uh, work through this process and uh, hopefully, hopefully bring it to a successful conclusion. Thank you, Mike. Any questions for Mike or Julia? Um, I, this is Ruth Ann again. I, I just wanna make a comment. Um, I wanted to, um, I think all of you know, uh, cause I don't have, uh, I have too much time on my hands. I'm president of LGA this year and I wanna thank Alcasan for our, their support, but also in our upcoming infrastructure day, Alcasan, I believe Jeannie, I, yes. um, you are helping to organize that. I thank you so much. I would hope that you would share um, how this all works because I got a sold out crowd here of newly elected officials <laughs> and um, to educate them as to what, you know, with these transfers and what's going on because it's just re-educate, re-educate because my goal, and I know you guys get tired of me, someday I go to an event 
and someone's educating me about Alkasan and what's going on. That would mm -hmm. be like fabulous. So the more word we get out, but thank you, Jeannie and Alkasan for that. But this information, I'm sure, uh, Jeannie, you'll look at all of it, how to package something great because these people, trust me, are nice people, but they don't, you didn't even know what the word Alkasan was, half of them, just so you know. So just want to bring that. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Hearing nothing, we'll move on to Dave Moss for three words. What weather, Dave? Dave, you're on mute. Thank you, everyone, for inviting me. Uh, Tim, as you said at the beginning, Kim uh, received a nice award from engineering, but Arletta received an award last week, a very prestigious award from the Engineer, um, Engineering Society of Western Pennsylvania. And uh, had the pleasure to be there. She had a great acceptance speech as always. And uh, Arletta, I would just say it was well-deserved. I've seen how you've guided this organization from what I remember when I started here 30 years ago to this expansion. You have a great team around you because that's what you would always say, but uh, you it was a well-deserved reward. So congratulations on that. So it's a little little side note there, sorry. It's, uh, but well-deserved. And Kim, your, your honor was well-deserved. So that just shows you the recognition that Elkison is, is getting for these, these um, engineering projects that they're doing. So uh, hats off to you guys. So here at Three Rivers, we continue to uh, coordinate with uh, the municipalities. Um, one of the things I'd like you to, to make sure that you're, you understand is a little bit of misunderstanding out there about the, the orders, uh, the municipal orders. They were negotiated by Alcacin, I mean, Green Street. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they were negotiated by Three Rivers and uh, not by Alcacin. There's a little bit of uh, misunderstanding out there that these uh, orders were negotiated. And especially this uh, for the separate SOAR communities that the gold line standard was established by Elkisan. Not true, not true at all. It was established by a group of engineers uh, from communities working with Three Rivers and developed a standard that was based on our region, not a national standard. So make sure that uh, you get that word out that Elkisan had nothing to do with this gold line standard. And uh, so I wanted to make sure we get that cleared up. Um, most of these separate store communities, I think now have all signed, uh, with, uh, with the exception of one, I think, uh, so that that's moving along. Well, there's a lot of, um, coordination going on with the combined store communities, uh, a lot of clarification that we're trying to get. And, uh, as our friends at Elkasan would tell you, getting answers back from DEP sometimes on clarification isn't something that happens overnight. So uh, we have some questions that are still out there hanging. Uh, I wanna thank uh, Mike and his team for working with Through Rivers on providing uh, models. Uh, you know, the municipalities need what's called a model to help reevaluate their systems to, to look at this. If you're a combined SOAR to look at your percent capture or if you're a, a separate SOAR system to evaluate uh, sanitary SOAR overflows. Well, if you take a normal model that Alcasan has, it takes you two days maybe to run with a very powerful computer. Uh, Three Rivers working with, with Mike and his team, we're able to, we were able to uh, obtain uh, updated models. We were able to call what's clipping them. And now when we give those off to a municipality, it only maybe takes two hours to run a model. So you can see that there's a lot of efficiencies there a lot of cost savings for the municipality. So that's a great coordination we have between Three Rivers and uh, Alcacin. So we, we greatly appreciate that on the half of the, behalf of the municipalities. Uh, we continue to work on uh, multi-municipal projects and um, coordinating uh, the communities to try to work together. Uh, it's, it's working well. Um, hats off to uh, to Julia, uh, we're getting a lot of positive feedback about the transfer of the trunk lines. They feel more comfortable. That is part of the orders. It is written into the municipal orders that they cooperate. 
uh, getting a lot of positive feedback uh, from that, that they're now starting to move forward uh, with that, that part. Um, I have um, made myself available to communities. I was uh, recently invited out to speak to Braddock Burrow. Uh, while time was limited, I did was able to speak to them at one of their public meetings, and now I'm going to have a follow up meeting with them. Uh, this afternoon, I've coordinated a meeting with um, McKees Rocks, where I'll be out at their um, up, um, meeting at the beginning of April to kind of go over and clear up any misunderstandings on the orders or anything like that. Again, have spoken to Verona, several communities. Just so you know, if any of your communities have any questions, I'm here to help you. Uh, you know, I've been in this business a long time, so I know evening meetings are where it's at sometimes with the elected officials. And, and we want to get the right word out. We don't want to get the word, as I used to say, from the hardware store, what everybody knows. We want to get the right answer to them. So if you have if your communities have any questions, please call me. Uh, always available. And uh, we'll be more than glad to come out to your communities. So that, um, that's really um, where we're at. The last thing we're doing is, I think I spoke about this last uh, month, but some of you weren't, weren't here, is some communities have um, influence from the city of Pittsburgh on their uh, PWSA, I should say, as to their outfalls and their points of connection. So uh, while the city does not have an order, they're still in that mix and they have agreed to, to meet with communities. Uh, they'd like the meetings to be coordinated through uh, my organization. And that way we can kind of keep a handle, but we've started those meetings. We actually have one tomorrow with the community and, and, uh, and PWSA. So it's working well. Uh, so everybody is, is cooperating well. So I, th I think we're moving forward. Hey, Dave. Yes. Um, should we reach out to DEP? Because we our meeting was in December and we haven't heard anything. I asked them again last week and they said they're still looking at it. Okay, because we did get them everything they asked for. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything else for Dave? Dave, thanks for the update. Appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Next item on the agenda is the advisory committee involvement in Elon Spring Conference which is in a few weeks, Jeannie. Thank you so much, um, Chair Rogers. Um, you know, we had a wonderful luncheon last year. And so now people have very high expectations that we'll have everything bigger and better. And so to meet those expectations, I am hoping that as many members of the advisory committee as possible can attend our lunch on uh, Friday, April. I keep getting the date wrong. April 8th at noon in Seven Springs. What, uh, among other things, one of the things I'm planning is we're gonna ask people to and help them find their seats so that they sit by basin so that then our advisory committee members can sit with their basin. Um, I know part of us still have in our heart of hearts the bad experience we had when no one would sit with us in the cafeteria when we were in seventh, eighth, ninth, graduate school but uh anyway we're going to make sure that uh, you have a good experience and that people uh, get to know you and recognize that you're there to to help them too um so what i would like for everyone to do i'm not going to make you do hard stuff uh but we will you've certainly been briefed enough to be able to help explain if people have questions you know sometimes they won't put their hand up with questions but they'll turn to somebody at the table and say i didn't hear a word he said what did he say um, no that's usually what i do uh so anyway what i would like you to do is if you can by the end of this week send a note to stevie if you will be in attendance and you have not not registered yet we will register you for the luncheon if, if you haven't registered already. Um, that won't get you registration for the whole conference, uh, but you know, you can wander around for a while. Um, but if you can let Stevie know, or if you can't remember Stevie's name, send me an email. So we'll get you all registered. It is gonna be another terrific lunch, uh, better than the food usually is. Uh, and we, are pretty excited about some of the things we're gonna be handing out to you. And right now, um, uh, I'm pulling together 
uh, various pieces of information so that we can make it coherent and have a great, um, a great pr uh, presentation. And I have my notes about video from the clean water plan. And uh, we also, we're gonna need to have a, it sounds like we're gonna need to have a widescreen TV at our, at our uh, booth too, so that we could show videos. We have already decided that we're gonna have a help desk. Uh, we're expanding our booth to, to, be, to have a second table that'll be the help desk. And predominantly that'll be for people who have questions about regionalization or grow, but frankly, anything they need help with, with Alcasam. We're also gonna be educating the municipalities on the um, uh, low income uh, water uh, assistance fund out of the state and, and so that the municipalities know that they have, they, they have a role in this. In fact, the role is pretty big in that they get to get any arrearages back from pe people who are income eligible through this program. So it means filing to become a vendor with the state so they could actually send you a check uh, or an electronic whatever. Uh, so we're going to be providing information on that. And we're probably going to have a, a fact or fiction uh, fact sheet, you know, because we know that people get, get a little confused. There are too many words that are similar, too many things going on. So we're going to be uh, doing that too. And Joey is going to be available to anybody, any of our customers uh, to go over the materials that uh, the um, advisory committee has already received. So we'll be, we'll be providing those uh, the press packets and Joey will be available to meet one-on-one -on -one with uh, or two-on-one, -on -one, however he works it out. So I'm really looking forward to this. I think it'll be a lot of fun. It'll also be my open, becoming the chair of ALOM. So I get to, no, I won't get to boss anybody around. Uh, and I won't have to buy drinks either, right? Tim will buy the drinks. I got that covered. You got that covered. <laughs> so anyway, please get back to me and let me know uh, whether you'll be able to come. Um, and again, we can pull your name off the registration forms from working with uh, ALOM if you've already registered. But uh, I think it'd be really valuable for the other municipalities to meet uh, the advisory committee. I think uh, we've hidden you too long. Jeannie, what's the date on that again? The lunch is, I'm looking at my calendar again, since if I try to do it from memory, I get it wrong every time. April 8th at noon in Seven Thanks. Springs. I don't know what room it is yet. Thank you. Sure. And I'll be sending it a uh, reminder out to everybody. Or so, yeah. And you don't have to be a current elected official or current manager or anything. You're on the advisory committee. You're in. Very good. Anything else? Hearing nothing, we'll go to updates from the municipalities. Any updates from the municipalities? Um, this is Ruthann. Um, I just wanted to, um, you know, uh, I, I had attended the communication toolbox, which I thought was great. Um, and um, hopefully uh, Chartiers will get a, a new person appointed so that the mayor and I can get together with them and and really get more communication out than we have even in the past as to some of the things that are going on. So I think the toolbox was uh, very informative and um, we will do that in the future. So thanks. I would echo that. Um, I intended the toolbox that Joe put on and it was very good. The rates increases are hitting the customers mm -hmm. and we're getting some calls. In my case, uh, Jailer, 53% of a water sewer bill is Alcasan. And uh, so that's a pretty high number. And so we're trying to get, so we, we've taken this, all of Joey's information and we're putting a direct link on our website. We're also advertising in our newsletter to try to get that information out as to why those rates are what they are. And uh, so we refer calls to the website. I'll take some of the calls and try to put the fire out, but, um, there is a noticeable increase in attention to the Alcasan bill. Uh, I had the one elderly senior citizen call me and she said to me, what the hell is Alcasan? So she, <laughs> she had been billed low these many years for Alcasan and I explained it to her. And I said, you know, 
and the option is that or we drop it into the river and she seemed to get that so <laughs> but it was a uh, joey i would compliment you on and, and, and everyone at elkasan on the quality of the media that you're putting out there it's, it's pretty good stuff thanks tim <clears throat> Pat? yeah i i would like to uh schedule a meeting um for someone to brief our public um works committee which meets on April 5th at seven o'clock. Um, the new chair is Mr. Cecil Watkins, and uh, he is completely unfamiliar with Alcasan or anything related. We also have two other new members of council who know nothing about this. And um, we notice our committee meetings to the public, so public does attend. Um, I think it would be helpful to have an update on um, just the whole thing, the, you know, where they talk about the trunk line upgrades, we've allocated the funds to do that, work should be going on that. Um, and I'd just like to have an update at that committee meeting on April uh, 5th, if that would be possible. Patty, that, that date is pretty much impossible. Okay. Uh, because of another, but if we could, we could, do just about well, any other do time. It at, we could do it at the committee of the whole on the 12th. Would that be better? Let me check my calendar here. Yep. April 12th? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then I'll put it on for committee of the whole on April 12th. At, and that would also be at 7. Yep. And that's better because the only other meeting that night is finance. And so it isn't as long of a meeting. Well, depending on what's going on at finance. <laughs> So um, how do I formalize that? Do I have to send you a note? Just send or... me a quick email so that I okay. make sure okay. I don't forget. I wrote right. it down. But... Okay. Uh, we have some updates at Sawmill Run in our basin. Um, we are in the process of re-engaging all of the communities in the integrated planning process. Of course, the plan was complete. And now we're looking to coordinate efforts on implement, implementing projects and, um, and agreements on goals and, uh, and outcomes for the, for the integrated plan. So we're gonna be do, setting up our first meeting in the next month or so. We also have a, uh, we've narrowed our consultants down for to two different, two consultant teams for our, Green Boulevard Master Plan, which is the basically a healthy corridor plan for Sawmill Run. So we're moving forward with that. We'll be engaging in the public in a number of uh, public and uh, citizen engagement opportunities on the plan um, over the next year. So we should be completed with that plan in the next, oh, probably by this time next year, maybe the end of, the, maybe the end of the summer in 2023. And we're moving forward with, uh, an, with the economic flooding study for Sawmill Run as well. So lots of, lots of stuff happening in Sawmill Run. We're really excited to be moving forward and on um, making progress on what could be a transformative future for the, for the watershed in the region. Lisa, in your plan, are there cross municipal is money being spent from one municipality and another? Municipality? And could you please speak louder? I Sorry. can't hear you at all. Are there multiple? Yeah, um, uh, Tim, Tim asked if if um, there are cross municipal agreements. We do not have agreements yet. We have everyone was at the table to create the plan. So we're moving forward with the. That's a, that's our next step is getting is getting agreements on on um, you know being able to spend money across municipalities and um, and also on shared goals and, and what we want to see happen. When we did the plan, the main thing that came, one of the main things that came out of the plan was that, that it, it became very apparent as we were moving forward with the plan that each individual community doing their projects was even in an in aggregate was never going to meet the clean water standard for the stream. We were never gonna meet the TMDL requirements on Sawmill Run. So what we have to do is think of larger watershed wide 
projects that, you know, that people can share in and cost share and also share credit for. So that's, that's our, those are our next steps in this. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a long haul, but I think that we're, you know, in the next year or so we should make significant progress. Thanks, Very Lisa. Good, Lisa. Um, I just wanted to give a brief update on the Pine Creek watershed. Uh, through the COG, the communities in the watershed uh, um, is entering into a, um, an agreement with the Army Corps for some technical assistance. We, um, after the WIP was completed, the updated WIP, the Stormwater Committee and the Co North Hills COG got together and we were trying to assess what projects would have the most impact on the watershed and quickly came to the realization that, you know, we, we shouldn't be making that call, nor were we qualified to. So we had the Army Corps come out about a technical assistance program they have and uh, the executive board of the North Hills Cog agreed to send it. So we're gonna, there is a, a match, but the communities in the Pine Creek watershed in the North Hills Cog do have some funding um, to meet the TMDL requirements. So um, we're just waiting to hear back from the army now. And the goal of it is to have somebody independent, our, our uh, COG engineer, with the Army Corps to prioritize the projects <clears throat> based on um, the effect they'll have on water quality and quantity. And then sh we'll share that as a group instead of everybody wanting their own project. So pretty excited about that too. We've been, that's been a long road. Tim can attest to that. We've been trying to look at things on a watershed level for quite a long time. So we're happy about that. Thanks, Emmy. Anything else? Um, is there a, any request for information or agenda items for the April 12th meeting coming up? Anybody want to have anything put on the agenda or any information they'd like to be updated on? Hearing none, we'll whip up an agenda for that. Uh, Max, is there anything that you want to? Uh, Tim, I think Dan had his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan. No, I, I actually, yeah, I was I'm back and forth between trying to get some stuff done. I just wanted to thank Gene. We had Joe came out to our meeting a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we appreciate that. Um, I recognized him, and then he got up because uh, at the same time at the, at that meeting, our environmental advisory board, which is they, we have an incredible, incredible uh, board of residents. Uh, they, um, they're now they're they've been working on the rain barrel program, and he, I, I, he got up to chime in a little bit about that, um, you know, about the program. So yeah, we we appreciate that, um, you know, sending that he came out. Uh, yes. To just participate, or just to, he was sitting in the back. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Come on, come on up here, Joe. <laughs> Um, introduce yourself. Talk. Speak. Um, we don't want to. We don't want to disrupt your work. We just want to present ourselves. Keep you know. Learn what's going on in your community. If you want us to say anything, we're happy to say anything. But I've got troops out there, and we'll be out there more and more as rates go up. I'm sure. Yeah. And as we do more exciting things. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. And he. he he just said, hey, if you need anything, you have any questions, just let us know. And then on those communication, uh, on those uh, Zoom, uh, the uh, points, the talking points or whatever, mm -hmm. um, I um, I passed that along. I just didn't have the time, but I, I did pass it along to a very, very able uh, assistant manager in Ross, Adam Raven. Adam, yeah. And because uh, he does all that stuff for us. So he's looking at, he, he said that was very helpful. He's looking at you know, at that and you know we we get that stuff out or how we mm -hmm. uh, can best get that stuff out uh through our social media platform website and all that um but uh, that was very helpful as well and uh chairman Ch uh, chairman rogers are you going to uh state college this week in about two hours yeah same here okay i'll see you up there see you there yeah is that a lawyer thing or a sewer thing kind of uh, it's a uh 
municipal labor law. Oh, uh, it's a lawyer thing. Yeah, lawyer, we <laughs> yeah. Can up and you know we it's intensive. We get a we attend classes. Tim and I sometimes are in the same class. We sit and we uh, we we listen intently and we ask each other questions and everything. So mm -hmm. we're going to be learning Great. a lot. I try to. That's all I have. Thank you. The conservative side a little bit. So uh, okay, anything <laughs> else for the for the good of the order? Uh, Max, we cut you off there. Max, you got anything? Nothing to report. Thanks for everybody for attending, and I'll see you up on April 8th. Great. I want to say the same thing, too. Uh, thank you all for attending. It was It's a little embarrassing when we were unable to get a quorum, so thank you all for coming out today. We are, uh, Jeannie and I are in constant discussion about trying to get this thing back in person, um, and it seems like every time we get a little step forward on the COVID mm -hmm. issue, we be back up a little bit. So uh, we're still trying to do that. Right. Or at least do a mixed meeting where you can do one of both. Any public comment? No, there there was no uh, okay, thank public you. comment. If anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none and without objection, we are adjourned. Thank you for your time.